This is a Hewlett Packard 411A. It's an RF voltmeter. This was made back in the early 60s. I believe the first uh, mention of this was in around 1961, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, it's all vacuum tubes except for uh, there's actually two germanium transistors in here. One is a used as an oscillator and another as an amplitude modulator and um, there's also some uh, solid state diodes used but the rest is all vacuum tubes of course and uh, this thing will measure uh, up to 10 volts of RF and depending on the probe tips that you have this particular probe tip goes up to 500 megahertz and uh, it's screwed onto the handle here. Looks like the old fashioned HP scope probes. And it's permanently hooked to the meter here. And uh, yeah, I, re I got this at a ham fest last fall and it's been sitting around, so I figured I better do something with it. So I'm going to put it on a variac and bring it up slow, measure the current, make sure there's nothing shorted and take the lid off and then we can look inside so I'll be back shortly well I put it on a variac, brought it up slow uh, no smoke everything seems to be uh, okay so far um, I don't see any signs of any burning components whatever the inside looks pretty pretty clean actually this is a power supply section down here. Main transformer uses a 6x4 as a rectifier and then two OB2s. These are gas uh, regulator tubes regulate the voltage. But what's interesting about this is uh, being 19 early 60s they're pretty much limited to vacuum tubes. The transistors back then weren't that good uh, germanium transistors which there's actually a couple of them in here here's one here here's some diodes <laughs> look at these things um, anyway what, what's interesting is right here this is a synchronous motor and you can see a little wheel spinning there this is spinning around and it's interrupting the light from these four lamps and they're being fed through these holes into the modulator and demodulator in this unit which I'll look at in a minute being careful not to uh, I'll have to keep myself here anyway these bulbs here illuminate down this actually a light pipe there's two of them that come down to the to the modulator here which is interesting yeah this still looks pretty nice there's a shot of the front Here's a schematic. I don't know if you can see this very well. I'm actually, um, I scanned this manual. I'm going to upload this to BAM. I'm going to send it to the moderator of that site and he can put a copy of this manual. It has uh, full schematics on it, so if you get one of these, it might help. I notice they don't have um, a manual for this on their site there, but. Here's a brief description on how the circuit works here. Signal comes in through the probe tip here and uh, here's the probe. Inside of this probe assembly are two diodes that are matched. Signal comes in here and there's a capacitor that couples it in through the cable here. These tips are exchanged here you can exchange them this particular one goes up to 500 megahertz so the signal comes in coupled in through this capacitor C10 
it's rectified by CR1 in the probe body and it's filtered by C11 here and applied to the top of this photoresistor which I'm assuming is a cadmium sulfide photocell they didn't have phototransistors and photodiodes back then so they were kind of limited these vary the resistance with a light level they have a high resistance when they're dark when they're illuminated the resistance drops down to a low level so these four photoresistors are illuminated by the four light bulbs that uh, go through the rotating disk. That synchronous motor drives that rotating disk and it alternately illuminates first the top two and then the bottom two back and forth and that's at a frequency a little below the line frequency uh, that's driven by the synchronous motor. So then those DC levels are chopped into a square wave and applied to this chopper amplifier chain. V3 amplifies the signal and it goes through an attenuator here which switches in the various ranges here from 0.01 to 10 volts. That's applied to the second stage here. It's amplified further. These are basically audio amplifiers. It's coupled through C31 to this last stage here which is a pentode which uh, provides more gain. All right, this is still a chopped uh, square wave and that's applied to the demodulator. Now this converts the chopped wave back into a DC level and that's done through these alternate uh, photoresistors that are switched. Anyway, that signal, which is DC now, is coupled to this cathode follower, the uh, vacuum tube here. The output of the cathode follower, which is a lower impedance, is driven down and drives this circuit. These are the two germanium transistors. Q1 is just a 100 kilohertz oscillator. Q2 is an amplitude modulator. It modulates the 100 kilohertz signal that's applied to the power amplifier here. It's another cathode follower. The output of that directly drives the meter through uh, this diode and filter here. This is 100 kilohertz. The 100 kilohertz from the modulator drives the power amplifier, which the output is a 100 kilohertz signal. So by rectifying and filtering that 100 kilohertz signal, that directly drives the meter. At the same time, that 100 kilohertz signal is applied back to the feedback path up through the uh, input attenuator here, the feedback attenuator, I should say, and that is directly applied in the probe to diode CR2. It's rectified. That DC level then is filtered by C12 here and applied to the bottom of this photoresistor. So this point here basically takes the difference in the two DC levels, chops it into a signal, it's amplified, converted back to DC, and used in the feedback loop. And so as the input signal varies, this gain of this loop varies and that variation is measured on the meter as an output. And it's interesting because in the early 1960s, of course they didn't have phototransistors and photodiodes and LEDs, so they were kind of stuck with cadmium sulfide and uh, photoresistors and vacuum tubes. And building a DC vacuum tube, a direct coupled vacuum tube circuit was tough. To build one that didn't drift, etc. Of course, nowadays with modern op amps, it'd be fairly easy to do this, but this is what the HP engineers had to work with. It's pretty ingenious. So anyway, that's basically how this circuit works. You're you're measuring the feedback output is what you're actually measuring, but you're comparing using the comparison of that with the input signal to vary this gain which varies the loop gain which is actually what's measured so very interesting 
there's a couple other things in here. Uh, this is a diode clamp here. I believe it's used to uh, drive this meter in a negative direction. Um, other than that, that's basically how this circuit works. This is how they did things back 60, what, 62 years ago. So the big question is, does the darn thing work? Uh, I doubt it's calibrated, but let's see if it actually measures an RF signal. So I'm going to turn on the RF here in a second, right now. And it looks like we're getting something here. Okay, I'm on the 0 0.3 volt range. 0 0.3 and 0 dB M. And it's measuring 2.2. So it's down a little bit. But it's still still measuring, so that's not too bad. I'm measuring um, 442 megacycle approximately on the meter here. 0.3 volts, 0 dB M. And I'm on 0.3 volt, 0 dB M scale here. So this is going to need calibration, but um, this might be handy to have working on uh, some of the equipment. Another option is to gut this and use the case and the meter with some modern electronics but I don't know if I really want to do that this is such a neat neat device here still amazes me how they use a spinning wheel with an interrupter and using four bulbs and a light pipe this has got to be one of the earliest times I've ever seen well it's not fiber optics it's just two plastic pipes but it's the first time I've ever seen an old piece of equipment that uses that. This thing also has outputs here. You could run to a chart recorder if you wanted. So is it worth calibrating and spending some time on? I don't know. The capacitors, power supply, everything seems to work all right. I had the thing on um, for about maybe half an hour and it hasn't shown any signs of any problems so anyway another I guess you'd call this a boat anchor another boat anchor comes home from the ham fest and like I say I'm I'm gonna send this a copy of this manual up to Bama if they're still accepting manuals because I, I looked on there and they don't have a listing for the 411A. And I did get a manual with this, which was kind of neat. So anyway, that's it for this one, and we'll see you next time.